one of the other things that I want to talk about when it comes to trips tight end is attacking the tight end side. How do you actually attack this tight end side? And there's actually a couple different ways uh, in which we can do that. In today's video, we're going to show you one of my favorite concepts uh, in the game, by far one of my favorite concepts. It's a super simple play, uh, but it can really do a lot for your offense in terms of being able to attack the different points at which we are attacking on the field. So I want to do a quick recap uh, of yesterday's video and explaining and understanding, again, space, which I think is super underrated. Like, we're talking about space here with trips tied in and spread formations and how to space the field with our routes. And, um, you know, I just think it's really important. So if you want to get my full trips tied in offensive ebook, the link is in the description. Uh, we've broken down trips tied in every single year. It's my favorite offense every single year. Um, and I think it's the number one spread passing style of offense in the game because there's so much versatility with motions and with routes that you can do. So uh, without further ado, let's get into the video and talk about attacking the right side of the field. We talked about attacking the left side of the field yesterday. Uh, the play we're going to come out in is PA counter go. That is going to be the play that allows us to attack the right side of the field. Um, so let's talk about attacking the left side of the field. So when you attack the left side of the field, um, there's a couple different ways in which you can do that. But this is really the best way, like something like this, like just flood the field with the corner route. You're going to see this corner route is going to get open about 30 yards, 40 yards down the field. So we attack the left side of the field that way. Um, another way that we attack the left side of the field is with this tight end post. You'll see that he's going to run his route at about 20 yard depth, as you can see right there. All right. So you've got a, a couple different ways to attack the left side of the screen. Now you need a couple different ways to attack the right side of the screen. There's actually several different ways in which you can do that out of this formation. Um, but what I like to do, and I think the best method uh, to attacking this right side of the field, is to use a concept known as Y-Cross. Um, we're going to build around this crossing route to Julian Edelman. And what I like to do with it is we're going to motion that number two receiver across, put him on a streak, and then we're going to put our backside receiver on a five yard in. So this is going to create kind of a levels concept on the left, a fade out concept on the right with that crosser overlapping uh, that right side defender. So you'll see here you've got a quick read on that tight end. Now this in this is the number one challenge with press man to man when you're when you're running trips. Uh, what you just saw right there. That this is the number one way that I think a defense can give you some trouble. And that is if they play press man-to-man, -man, you'll notice here that this tight end, because he's on the line of scrimmage, he bumps in. You see that bumping? Spacing formations like trips is one of the things we don't want to have happen. We don't want them to bump. Um, so the best way to uh, kind of alleviate that is to simplify it. And that is to take the tight end, and instead of putting him on a 10-yard out route, now we're going to put him on a 5-yard out route. And what you'll notice when we put him on a 5-yard out route they don't bump anymore, and he's still a quick snap read, really good against the blitz, getting to the flat to the right side of the field very quickly. All right. Um, another thing you can do with this formation is you can run this play with your trips to the short side or to the wide side. It's, it's actually super versatile. Another little pro tip is you can motion that, that number two receiver to the trip side. So in that example, I motioned him to the left. It's going to bring him into kind of a unique alignment over here. The reason for this unique alignment, why it's helpful, is because you see how it serves as almost like a natural pick, natural rub for that route, but still does its job of getting up and out of the way so that we can throw the tight end route, which is super, super important. All right. Now, the other thing is these crossing routes, and I think these crossing routes have been slept on all year um, because people, honestly, they just... They, we didn't have the abilities to make them super good. But now with the abilities we have where they are really good, you're going to see he's going to get that separation, and he's going to get into that really nice pocket over there on the right side of the field. Now, to talk to kind of use our cover two zone principle just to kind of give us a, a little bit of a, a taste in terms of route depth and how we can break down zone coverage, this is really good for breaking down zone um, because you have – just a really nice high-low concept on the left, on the right, and in the middle of the field. So what you'll see here is that this route to Julian Edelman is going to run um, to the opposite 40-yard line. So about again, about 30, 30-ish uh, yards uh, to that sideline is is what he's going to do. So if they're if they're trying to play you in cover two because they know that cover two is really good for um, you know defending defending your tight end post route. 
this is not going to be a great strategy uh, on the right side of the field. You'll see here you got her tight end quick to the flat, wide open. But I've also got that crosser that's getting over the top of a, any generic zone. Any generic zone in the game, that, that crosser is going to get over the top of. Now, the other thing we need to showcase, and this is the reasoning for the motion. So if we don't motion, uh, this was a route combo last year, and it's still decent this year. If we don't motion, um, you'll see this outside quarter zone on the right. He will play it in baseline press cover four, as you can see right there. So that's a problem um, because that route can play – that route can play way too much, right? So let me show you what we can do. So same scenario, baseline press cover four. We're still going to do that left, that short side motion, uh, or not short side motion, but just that that where you motion the, the number two receiver to the trip side. Now what you're going to see is this outside quarter is going to run with him up the seam, and he's not going to play that right there. You see you have plenty of space to be able to cut off that corner or crosser and, and you can really do some things, do some damage that way. Now, uh, I did want to get into how are they going to defend this. Uh, so how are they going to defend something like this, this concept? They're going to put their flats at 30. Their curl flats are going to go to 5. Typically, the vert hooks uh, or the, uh, the yellow zones will go to 5 as well. All right. So they're going to double mable you. Uh, what do I mean by double mable? I just mean double flatting. So we're going to have an underneath flat zone here underneath flat zone here. So this is going to take the tight end out. This is going to take that deep crosser. This is going to take the clear out streak. And then what this does is now, obviously they want to have some integrity in their coverage, so they'll probably put that guy to third. Um, this guy is going to use her that underneath end route. So I want to show you how this all works out. So this is the best way by far uh, to defend this play, all right? And it's also the best way to defend the other play, which I'll talk about in just a second. But what you'll see here is that out is guarded, the in route, the space in the middle of the field, that guy is going to be open. So they get into this kind of game where it's really hard for them to win because they really need a vert hook over here to help on this, but they're not going to get it because they have because of because of the fact they have to have this guy over here. So this guy has to be here. You know, you have to have something like this. So now. If you think about this defender, he's going to be in no man's land. Typically, he's going to guard this in route. I'm going to try to illustrate as best I can, like the lurk, generally speaking, um, because he's going to try to trust his 30-yard cloud on that sideline. The problem with the 30-yard cloud on the sideline, I'm going to show you two problems with it. The first problem is it is um, it's going to be too far to the sideline. So you'll see here, you can highball this right in that little pocket and catch it before he gets to the sideline, as you can see, if they're running over there. So what that means for the user is the user has to choose uh, or the user has to stay in the middle of the field for longer than he would want to. Uh, he has to stay in the middle of the field for longer than he would want to. And so then the natural like reaction to that is Michael Irvin uh, should be open, you know, kind of right in that little pocket right there. Now, again, he would be carrying that crosser. So he's going to, because I put my zone drops on five, he's going to be a little bit of a pain. Um, but he would actually practically more play so he'd probably play his zone a little bit more like a deep blue. And it makes it so that you have a small window to where you can hit this in route. Now there's ways around this coverage, but this is the coverage you force them into, right? Um, so you see right there, because curl flats don't carry those uh, zones as good as they used to, all right? Now the second problem that this creates is we can run the same exact concept, except put our receivers at different depths. So it's, everything is gonna look exactly the same, except this time we're not gonna try to attack 20 yards down the field. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to slant that crosser and we're going to everything's exactly the same, except now we're going to have a slant and then we're going to have a backside smart routed in route. So dip, we're just changing the depths of this route combo. And what you'll see is against a double Mabel, you can throw that right in that little pocket right there. So this is a way that you can kind of counter. We're going to talk tomorrow about it. But basically what we've done with these couple of uh, different plays here is we've forced our opponent into what's known as double Mabel coverage, uh, what's known as double Mabel coverage. And double Mabel, Mabel coverage, as I explained previously, is they're going to have two flat zones to the short flat. They're going to have a guy in the middle of the field, and they're going to have 
you know, something like this. So typically where you want to attack where they start to do this is you want to attack the middle of the field. We're going to teach you how to do that tomorrow. Thanks for watching the video. If you want to get more on trips tied in, get my entire offensive ebook. The link to sign up for that is going to be in the description down below.